You know, in computer science, there's this legendary problem that's supposed to prove there are things computers can just never do. It's talked about like it's this fundamental wall we can never, ever get past. But what if that wall was never really there? What if this whole impossible problem is built on a really simple misunderstanding? So that's the big question, right? For decades, the official answer has been a hard yes, and it's all because of this one single famous problem. But the truth, well, it might be a lot more straightforward, and honestly, way more optimistic than the textbooks would have you believe. We're gonna break this down into six parts. We'll start with the popular myth this whole thing created, and we'll end up with what it really means for the future of AI. So first up, let's talk about the common understanding, the big idea that's really shaped how we think about the absolute limits of machines. This is the myth right here. It's the idea that there are just some computer programs out there that are fundamentally unknowable, that no matter how smart our computers get, we can literally never figure out what these specific programs are going to do. It's like there's this giant brick wall that our knowledge can just never get past. And at the very heart of this myth is the halting problem. Now, the challenge sounds pretty simple, but the implications are huge. The question is, can you write one single master program, let's call it a decider, that can look at any other program you give it and tell you with perfect accuracy, yep, that one will finish, or nope, that one's going to get stuck in an inescapable loop forever? The classic proof pretty much screams, no, you absolutely cannot build that master decider. So let's walk through exactly how this little contradiction machine gets built. Okay, so the proof works in four really clever steps. First, it says, all right, just for a second, let's assume this universal decider program actually exists. Step two, using this imaginary decider, we're gonna design a new kind of mischievous program and we'll call it opposite. Now step three is the real kicker. We program opposite to first ask the decider, hey, what are you gonna predict for me? And then whatever the decider says, opposite is hardwired to do the exact, well, opposite. And this leads right to step four, a completely brain-breaking paradox that seems to prove our decider could never have existed in the first place. And this is the gotcha moment. It perfectly illustrates the paradox. If the decider looks at our opposite program and predicts this program is going to halt, well, the opposite program is designed to immediately enter an unending loop. But if the decider predicts this program is going to loop forever, then the opposite program is designed to immediately halt. The prediction is always wrong. It's a contradiction. And so the logic goes, a universal decider must be impossible. That seems like a total slam dunk case, right? Game over. But what happens if we step out of this abstract theoretical world and into a more practical one? What if we're just playing the game by the wrong rules? Let's just imagine a world that plays by slightly different rules we're gonna build what we'll call a simple world. In this world, programs can't just run forever in an unending loop, that's against the rules. Instead, every program has to finish, and as its very last action, it has to print one of two words to the screen, either halt or loop, and then it stops. This is key because it takes away the problem of actual unending loops and lets us focus just on the pure logic of prediction. So how does this work in the real world? Well, let's say we build our first decider. Call it decider underscore one. It has a database, but right now it's empty. Its rule is simple. If I don't know a program, I just abstain. Now, some adversary comes along and creates a program called opposite underscore one, specifically designed to fool our decider. So we ask our decider underscore one, hey, what about this one? It checks its database, sees nothing, and correctly says, sorry, I don't know, I abstain. Now, crucially, the decider isn't broken, it's not wrong. It's just telling us it doesn't have the data yet. So what do we do? Easy. We just run opposite underscore one ourselves, see what it does, and then we add that information to our database. And with that new knowledge, we can build a smarter, better decider underscore two. And this process can just keep going. And right there, that's the fatal flaw in the whole contradiction argument. See, an adversary can build a program like opposite underscore one to contradict a decider that already exists. But you can't build a program to contradict a future decider, one that hasn't even been written yet the whole contradiction machine just falls apart. So if the logic can be dodged that easily, why has this proof been so powerful for so long? Well, it's because it relies on this massive hidden assumption, an assumption that takes place in a complete fantasy world. So let's just state it plainly. What is the single point of failure in this legendary proof that has defined the limits of computation for nearly 100 years? Okay, here's the absolute crux of it. 
The proof only works if you assume that a single, fixed, decider program has to be able to analyze a pre-existing, complete, and unending collection of every single program that could ever possibly exist. The proof gets all its power from this abstract, mathematical idea of a completed, unending set. This analogy just absolutely nails it. The proof is basically saying that if you have an unending number of different doors, you can't make one single finite skeleton key that opens all of them. I mean, you could always imagine a new kind of lock, right? But that's not some profound discovery about the limits of keys. It's just a trick of definitions. It's an obvious statement dressed up to look like some deep mystery about what's possible. When you really strip away all the fancy language, this is the question the halting problem is asking. It's demanding a single, finite program that can somehow hold an unending amount of information about every program that could ever be created in the future. I mean, when you phrase it that way, it's not some profound limit on knowledge. It's just a logical absurdity. And this gets us to the very heart of the matter. We need to rescue the word undecidable from this mathematical fantasy land and see what it actually means in the real world. This idea of all unendingly many programs just existing all at once, that's a pure mathematical fantasy. It's an abstraction. In the actual physical universe that we live in, at any single moment, there is only a finite number of programs. That unending set just doesn't exist. Okay, so let's land the plane here. Why does busting this myth actually matter? What are the real world implications for AI and for our understanding of what's truly possible? Let's put these two realities side by side. In the classical fantasy view, the set of all programs is unending and complete. This makes a universal decider impossible, and it creates what looks like a hard limit on knowledge. But over here, in the finite, real world, our collection of programs is always growing. Here, a universal decider for an unending set is an undefined concept, and so-called undecidability is really just an artifact of a bad assumption. In our world, knowledge isn't static, it's dynamic, and it's always evolving. It means we can finally bust some pretty powerful myths. The idea that AI has these inescapable limits baked into logic itself, that's an artifact of the fantasy. The notion that some specific programs are just unknowable, they don't exist. Any specific program can be analyzed. And the argument that human intuition must be somehow magically superior to get around this problem, well, that's just based on a misunderstanding of what the problem ever was. So, what are the big takeaways here? First, the halting problem proof does not, and has never, proven that any single specific program is impossible to figure out. Second, its famous limit only applies in a mathematical fantasy land of unending programs. Third, in our world, we can always just build better deciders as new programs get made. And finally, this means it's not a fundamental barrier to AI. It's more like a classification puzzle. When you strip away all the mystery, this is what the halting problem proof really shows. You can't fit an unending amount of information into a finite box. You can't write a finite program that knows everything about an unending number of things. The thing is, that's kind of obvious. It's trivial. The idea that this means knowledge itself is somehow limited, well, that's just false. And that leaves us with a final, pretty provocative thought. For almost a century, we've bought into this idea as a fundamental barrier to what computers and AI can do. So if this legendary limit turns out to be just an illusion, a ghost created by a faulty premise about unending sets, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other limits are we accepting without question? 